How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be returning once again to the fun house that is the Fire Red and Leaf Green Legendary Speedrun series. Now last time I finished up the last of the Gen 3 Legendaries in Regirock and since I'm going in reverse Pokedex order it's time for me to go ahead and see how Celebi fares. Celebi is one of the mythical legendaries, having a base 100 in every stat, and matching that with a grass psychic typing, Celebi is in a prime position to do a ton of damage and be able to just wreck house through Kanto. Grass and psychic type attacks are all special in Gen 3, and Celebi gets access to both Calm Mind and Recover, so being able to set up on basically anything, heal up and just stack uh, these massive amounts of numbers onto each of these Pokemon and KOing them over and over again is basically key to winning. Speaking of Recover, that's one of Celebi's four starting moves. Yeah, we get to start with a full move set of Confusion, Leech Seed, Recover, and Heal Bell. And while there are only five other level up moves, one of them is very useful in the form of Ancient Power. And the amount of TMs that Celebi can get in this game is fantastic, such as the aforementioned Calm Mind, but attacks like Giga Drain, Solar Beam, and Psychic are fantastic for same type attack bonuses, with coverage like Return, Shock Wave, Shadow Ball, and Aerial Ace could possibly come in handy. Anyway, how well will Celebi do? Well, comment down below what you think the final time will be, and let's get into it. So I replaced Bulbasaur with Celebi since eventually Charizard will definitely be the most difficult starter to take down, and I nicknamed it after Mr. Game Freak Shill himself. Sword and Shield sucks ass, you can't change my mind. Anyway, this rival battle is easily handled with a Leech Seed and two Confusions, winning me the fight and allowing me to head out of Pallet Town, grabbing the parcel and making some progress afterwards. Now, although Celebi can't get any Grass-type attacks by level up, having a special move in Confusion for Brock's Pokémon will help very much, especially since it has same type attack bonus. I also made sure to fight a few trainers in the Viridian Forest, not all of them, but I figured being around level 11 would be pretty nice and safe for Brock. He leads with Geodude, so I throw two Confusions at it, KOing and leading to Onix. Onyx goes down in three confusions after using Rock Tomb, lowering my speed as well as bind, but it doesn't do nearly enough damage, allowing me to win the first of the eight badges. I like to make a little mini game out of these runs though, such as when I'm recording, I look at the file size and amount of time I'm spending as I go, so I made it a goal that it would take me 10 minutes to get to each gym leader. Of course, on my way through Route 3, I grab Spiro, using Leech Seed to sap it down a bit and make it easier to capture so that I wouldn't have to have the same problem as I had with Regirock, getting into Mount Moon and getting through rather quickly thanks to not running into a bunch of optional trainers. The last one I ran into was the last on the first floor, and that was simply because of the fact that I forgot to grab the rare candy, therefore throwing off the cycle that she's normally at. But that's not a problem since her Pokemon go down to one confusion each, letting me get through the single required Rocket Grunt and Scientist, grabbing the Dome Fossil because f*** you, before leaving. Celebi can't learn Mega Punch or Mega Kick upon exiting Mount Moon, so I just said screw it, let's go fight Misty before heading up north. Sure enough, challenging her was easy enough thanks to having both Leech Seed and Recover. She leads with Staryu, so I kick it off with Leech Seed using three confusions to KO after a Super Potion is used, leading to Starmie. I did the same thing here, leech seeding it and just rapidly clicking confusion over again, and despite Starmie resisting, I was gaining a ton of HP, winning the War of Attrition as well as the Cascade Batch. Kinda funny that both gym leaders that have a weakness to grass in this game both went down to a grass type Pokemon with no offensive grass type attacks, but eh, I don't know, pays to be a mythical Pokemon I suppose. Now that we're one fourth of the way through the badge quest though, I headed up north for the second rival battle of the run, and since he starts with Pidgeotto, I gotta take it out ASAP because of being weak to it. Fortunately, Gus doesn't do too much, so I just hit it with two confusions, then used Recover to get most of Celebi's HP back before finishing it off with a third confusion, leading to a level up and learning Ancient Power. Would have been nice about one Pokemon ago, but okay. I decided to get rid of Heal Bell, since it's practically useless in a solo challenge like this, with him going into Charmander next. It does go down to a single Ancient Power, leading to Rattata, which goes down to Confusion, effectively winning me the fight since Abra has no attacking moves, going down to a Confusion and Ancient Power. Very quick, very painless. 
very nice, very evil. Recover does indeed make things a lot easier. Route 24 and 25 are very easy to get through because of it and because of my offensive moves so far. And despite my lack of power points, having to heal once after the Nugget Bridge before getting to Bill, grabbing the SSN ticket, and heading straight for Vermilion City, it really wasn't that big of a deal and that much of a time waster. I grabbed the TM for Dig after beating the Rocket Grunt, which unfortunately won't be used, but hey, I appreciate the money fodder. Now that I can get into Vermilion City though, I grabbed the traded Farfetch'd as well as the Bike Voucher before heading into the boat, housing the third rival battle. Now that I've got Ancient Power though, Pidgeotto is no problem going down in one shot, leading to Charmeleon. Now it almost goes down as well, using a single smoke screen before going down to a Confusion. Third out is Raticate, which literally dies to two confusions, we all know what happens here. Out of five, that manages to land. I don't know how one smokescreen managed to do that, but okay. This just leaves Kadabra, which goes down in one ancient power due to having the Brittleist defenses on planet Earth. The rival is actually starting to get easier simply because I have access to a really nice rock type move, and with a grass psychic type, that's just a ton of great coverage in order to hold off the fire and flying types on the team. Especially since, well, not the next rival battle, but the one in Sylph Company will start having that quad weak Charizard. With that info in the books, I got the HM for Cut, heading straight into the gym and getting into that battle with Lieutenant Surge. He leads with Voltorb, so I went for Confusion thrice after a Super Potion was used, taking it out after taking a Screech leading into Pikachu. Since it's level 19, it goes down to a single Confusion, leaving just Raichu. It uses Thunder Wave after a single Confusion, getting off a double team and dodging a few Confusions, but eventually Celebi's able to land two more of them, KOing and winning me the Thunder Badge. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have just Leech Seeded turn 1, knowing that it could have set up multiple double teams, but, you know, I'm not the smartest person alive. Three down, five to go. And I think Surge was going to be the second hardest due to my lack of a Cherry Berry, but here we are, a single sweep in a single attempt. Now that it's time for that grand old trek through Route 9, Rock Tunnel, and Route 8, it's time for today's plugs. First up, if you'd like to get access to these videos early, sometimes a day in advance, sometimes more, make sure to head on over to my Patreon page and become a $5 a month backer or higher. Link in the description. Secondly, I'd like to thank you all for checking out my last video. I'm honestly shocked at just how well the Soul Silver Pokewalker Weight Loss Professor Oaks Challenge video did, and I can't wait to give you guys more episodes of that. Lastly, make sure to subscribe. We're very much closing in on 100,000 subscribers, and I can just taste that plaque. It's gonna be delicious silver in my mouth, baby. Anyway, now that all of those areas are done, I'm able to head into Celadon City, in which my first area of business was getting the tea, so that I could go into Saffron City immediately, since the TM for Psychic will allow for the remainder of the game to go extremely quickly. Heading back into Celadon City, I quickly grabbed the coin case and the PowerPoint up, using it on Psychic and heading into the gym, since there is another TM that will make this run extremely easy, fighting the least amount of trainers in order to get to Erika. I swept her entire team immediately with a single Psychic per Pokemon, KOing Victory Bell, Vileplume, and Tangela, since for some reason she decided to send them out in a different order. Weird. With that handled though, I got the Rainbow Badge in hand, and I can move on. Now that I've taken out Erica though, it's time for the few bosses that I have to fight before gaining access to the next gym, which there are only two of. First of which being Giovanni in the Game Corner hideout, and since I have the TM for Giga Drain now, I immediately slapped it onto Celebi like you would throwing a disc in a disc drive, I guess. Are Pokemon disc drives? Is that how they learn TMs? I don't know. But I immediately slapped it on there and went in to fight Giovanni. He leads with Onix going down to one Giga Drain, leading to Kangaskhan, which goes down to two Psychics, after only using Tail Whip, leaving just Rhyhorn to go down to a Giga Drain. Now that's how I expect a Giovanni fight to go. Completely and utterly pathetic. With the Sylph Scope in hand though, I grab the HM for Fly, grabbing the bicycle before heading back to Lavender Town to take on my rival and clear the area out. He leads with Pidgeotto, so I one-shot with Ancient Power, leading to Gyarados instead of Charmeleon, oddly enough, who gets two-shot with Giga Drain after Intimidate makes Ancient Power basically useless, only hitting a single Thrash before Charmeleon actually comes out. Sadly, I didn't pick up on the fact that Ancient Power was physical at that moment, using it and bringing Charmeleon down to the low yellow before taking an Ember, finishing it off next turn with Psychic. Fourth out is Kadabra, who does go down pretty handily to a single Giga Drain, leaving just Execute. 
Since this thing's the same type as Celebi, I'm pretty easily walled by it, having to get through Hypnosis just to land a few attacks, eventually KOing through again the War of Attrition, winning the fight against my rival. A few trainers later and I'm able to rescue Mr. Fuji, getting the Pokeflute in return and using it to head towards Fuchsia City, but not before grabbing the hidden power point up, Max Elixir, and Rare Candy on Cycling Road. Seriously, these are some of the most important items in the run, especially when you're working with super low power point moves like Giga Drain and Psychic to a lesser extent, and the levels that I don't have to work for are always appreciated for speed's sake. Koga's up next, and despite my grass typing, this should still be a relatively simple encounter. He leads with coughing, so I go for Psychic, getting a crit and KOing leading to Muck. Kinda wish that crit was on Muck, but... You'll see why. Psychic does a one-shot, so of course that crit would have mattered, allowing him to set up a Minimize, but my next two Psychics connect after a Hyper Potion, KOing with the second Coughing following suit to a single Psychic. Last up is Weezing, and due to its lackluster special defense, it also goes down to a single Psychic, winning me the fight. Very expected when it comes to a Psychic-type legendary, can't really go wrong. So on my way to grab the Gold Teeth and HM for Surf, I somehow accidentally ran into a Pokemon because I forgot to put on a Repel, encountering a Chansey while not needing it. This actually drives me nuts. I wish I had this sort of luck in Professor Oak challenges, but it never seems to work out that way. With those items collected though, Self Company is next on the docket, with only two trainer battles being done before finding my rival once again. He leads with Pidgeot, which is a bit threatening to Celebi, but I'm able to land two Psychics, taking it out and leading to Gyarados. I swapped between Recover and Giga Drain twice each in order to keep Celebi's HP as high as possible, since likelihood is, is that Charizard comes out third, so having high HP is definitely paramount. It only goes for a few Dragon Rages going down and sure enough leading into Charizard. Ancient Power is able to do a ton of work here, nearly KOing on the first attack, but he uses Scary Face, outspeeding next turn and taking Celebi down to 8 HP before going down to a second Ancient Power. Fortunately for me though, one of his slowest Pokemon in Execute is out next, so even with a minus 2 speed drop, Celebi is able to use Recover to heal up before a Stun Spore comes in, letting me heal to full with a second Recover next turn. But of course, Confusion has to proc the Confuse status, and we all hate Parafusion. So after a few turns of that nonsense, during which I hit an Ancient Power and get an Omni Boost, I land a second one, getting Execute down to half health before using a Psychic to KO, leaving just Alakazam. It goes for Reflect instead of having Light Screen, sealing its fate as two Psychics are able to KO, winning me the fight. Alright, well, one boss down, one to go. At least in this area, I mean. Of course, with healing in between, I need those power points. Giovanni fight number two time, and he's really not that bad here, since my moves are perfect to take out his team. He leads with Nidorino, so I just go straight for Psychic, KOing and leading to Nidoqueen, who doesn't quite go down to Psychic, but I am lucky to not get paralyzed by Body Slam, leaving me to recover the damage with Giga Drain, following it up with Kangaskhan. This thing makes the same mistake that it did last time, going down to two Psychics after only using Tail Whip, leaving just Rhyhorn to go down to a Giga Drain, opening up Sabrina's Gym, and effectively allowing me to destroy the game from here. See, Sabrina's reward for beating her is not only the March Badge, but the TM for Calm Mind, an absolutely broken move that paired with Dual Stab and Recover should make for an easy rest of the run. She starts with Kadabra, and since it's very frail, it goes down to Ancient Power leading to Venomoth. I probably should have used Psychic here for super effective stab damage, but I keep up the Ancient Power Train, searching for Omni Boosts but not getting any on the first as Supersonic Mist. One Hyper Potion from Sabrina later, and Celebi is able to KO with a critical Ancient Power, once again missing the Omni Boost as Mr. Mime takes the helm. I don't want it setting up Light Screen, so I go for Ancient Power, doing half as it sets up Barrier, going down to Giga Drain next turn. Glad the physical attack bait worked, and now Alakazam's all that's left, and by the all that's left, I mean this thing is the stupidest stalling Pokemon I've ever seen. The fact that I can't do over half damage with Psychic, and the fact that I ran out of power points with both Giga Drain and H Power, basically means I was stuck sitting here until either I got enough special defense drops or criticals to bypass Alakazam's own recover. Fortunately, this happens after a few turns winning me the fight, and most importantly, the TM for Calm Mind. Eh, in case you were wondering, the run is over. Make sure you click like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, tell a friend, and don't spend more than a minute doing that, since if you are, you're taking too long. 
Oh, you want me to actually go over the rest of the battles? Alright, well, I can't say that I didn't warn you. Next gym leader on the docket is Blaine, and I'm a wee bit worried about him, though the likes of Calm Mind and Recover should help me defend against the likes of Fire Blast. Especially after giving Celebi a held Rossberry in case that burn chance comes in. Blaine leads with Growlithe, so I start setting up Calm Mind, getting up three of them before getting to half HP and using Recover as he uses Roar. Well, I kind of forgot about that one, so I went ahead and deposited my two HM helpers into the PC so this can't happen again. Second attempt goes much better now that he can't swap me out of my stat boosts, setting up two Calm Minds before using Recover, setting up the next three using one more Recover before blasting through the entire team of Psychic, KOing Growlithe, Ponyta, Rapidash, and Arcanine, winning the fight. Told you this run was over. Giovanni's even more of a pushover since Giga Drain's useful here as well, so let's see how many Calm Minds it takes for him to fall. He leads with Rhyhorn, so I go for a single Calm Mind before Scary Face worries me a bit. So I go for Giga Drain, KOing and leading out to Nidoqueen. Queen. Psychic is a one-shot on it, as it is on Nidoking King with Doug Trio coming out fourth. I shift back to Giga Drain to take both it and the second Rhyhorn out, winning the fight. Alright, well, Celebi's sitting at a clean level 50. I bet you that even Pidgeot's physical attacks won't be able to help it here. Sure enough, it starts by wasting time with Feather Dance, oddly enough. But hilariously, it uses Wing Attack twice, getting a critical after I get off my third Calm Mind, so I shift over to Recover to fix that, but of course, Quick Attack was able to KO Celebi, forcing me into a second attempt. Funny to say the least, but it won't happen again. Pidgeot's the lead, once again of course, so I use Calm Mind again, setting up two of them before going for Recover twice, shifting for Psychic to take it out, leading to Charizard. I was sort of hoping for the Gyarados here so that I could set up more Calm Minds, but I was confident in Psychic, but I missed the one shot, walking into a scary face afterwards. I'm worried the same thing that happened to the self company battle will happen again here, but I do go for the Psychic with him responding with Slash first. Not sure why you wouldn't go for the super effective move, even through two Calm Minds. I figured it would still do more damage, especially with same tack bonus, but alas, I'm able to take it out leading to Execute. Recover's able to take me back to full as it paralyzes with Stun Spore, should have changed my held item for this one, but Celebi surely can get through it. Sure enough, next turn as Execute starts charging for Solar Beam, I am able to KO with a single Critical Psychic, one-shotting and leaving Rhyhorn to go down to Giga Drain, as well as Gyarados to a Critical. Alakazam is oddly enough a bit of a fighter, surviving a Giga Drain and disabling it the turn after, but a Psychic is still able to finish the job, winning me the fight. Well, I guess Calm Mind didn't make the rest of the run trivial, I still lost to Critical Priority Strats. Everything is fine though, since now I can get through Victory Road, picking up one last rare candy on the way through without fighting a single trainer. Now, in terms of Pokemon League preparations, there really aren't any to do here, as I already have my final move set, so I just grabbed a few full restores just in case I take damage, and went in with plenty of PowerPoint recovery items and berries. First up is Lorelei, and despite her insistence on being an Ice-type trainer, the majority of her Pokémon also share the Water-type, so we should be fine with Calm Mind and Giga Drain. She leads with Dugong, so I used four Calm Minds, setting up through Safeguard, Hail, and two Ice Beams, KOing with Giga Drain and going back to near full HP before Lapras comes in second. One shot down, third is Slowbro, one shot down, but of course Big Bad Jinx comes in, putting Celebi to sleep, then gets lucky enough to spam Ice Punch enough times, getting two off before a third crits to knock out Celebi. Well then, why am I not surprised? This thing always has to get the status hacks and criticals in before I remember to slap a Chesto Berry onto my Pokemon. This allows me to do the same thing as I did in Attempt 1, spamming Calm Mind before ripping through her first three members with Giga Drain, getting the Jinx and taking it out with two Psychics, as to save power points for Bruno's two Onyxes later, leaving just Cloyster to go down to Giga Drain. Funnily enough though, Lorelei took about half of the footage I had for the Elite Four. That is how easy these next four battles went. Bruno's obviously a cakewalk, only requiring a single Calm Mind before taking out Onyx with Giga Drain. Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee with a Psychic each, the second Onyx with Giga Drain, and Machamp with a Psychic to win the fight. Not surprising, but what is surprising is that I almost forgot to use the seven rare candies in my inventory. I probably could have done it without them, but I figured for the Poison-type Elite 4 member, and no, I'm not recognizing her as anything different, 
it would help to boost up Psychic just that much more. I also gave Celebi a Lumberry, since I don't know if I'll get confused or put to sleep, so whichever ones happens first will be negated. Agatha leads with Gengar, Psychic, gone, Arbok, Psychic, gone, Gengar number 2, Psychic, gone, Golbat, Psychic, gone, Haunter, Psychic, gone. Can't say I was surprised there, absolutely didn't need Calm Mind whatsoever. Fortunately, with this easy sweep though, I get to keep the Lumberry just in case Lance manages to squeeze in a Thunder Wave off of one of his Dragonairs. He leads with Gyarados, so I just take the time to set up through Bite and Dragon Rage, using four Calm Minds before recovering all of my HP back, using two more for security reasons, then sweeping his team afterwards, taking out Gyarados with Giga Drain, Aerodactyl with Psychic, oddly enough outspeeding, pretty neat I suppose, Dragonite with Psychic, Dragonair number one with Psychic, and Dragonair number two, obviously with Psychic. One more battle to go, and I changed my held item around, swapping for a Citrus Berry since I expect Pidgeotto will be able to put a pounding on me. But once my Calm Minds are set up, it'll be all over. I also gave Celebi a Max Elixir to ensure that I don't have to use Struggle in this fight, since Lord knows that would be a little bit of a pickle in terms of time if I had to. The rival leads with Pidgeot, so I go for Calm Mind, getting three of them up through three Aerial Aces, rocking the Citrus Berry, and forcing me to use Recover twice. This is where Pidgeot decides to shift into Sand Attack, and I'm not about to let this thing get more than one of them off of me. So I immediately go for Psychic, critting with the KO, leading to Gyarados. Well, that's a nice easy swap to deal with. This allows me to finish off the rest of the Calm Minds I need to get up to plus 6, healing with Recover and Giga Drain to take it out. Charizard's third, and yeah, there was no way it was living a plus 6 Psychic. Alakazam nor Rhydon can stand up to Giga Drain, leaving just Executor to fend me off. I do end up missing Psychic thanks to that lone sand attack, letting him get in an Egg Bomb, but the second attempt of Psychic just one-shots Executor, despite the resistance, winning me the fight, and the league with a time of 3 hours and 8 minutes at level 62. Gotta say, really angry at myself for missing first place over Rayquaza by just 2 minutes. There was easily time to shed if I hadn't done some stupid mistakes that I was making in hindsight, such as not taking the teleporter on the fifth floor of the Stealth Company to avoid the trainer that would normally block you from the card key door on the third floor that leads you to the rival, time spent bumping into stuff in Rock Tunnel, seriously, you'd think that I'd have that place memorized like the back of my hand by now, and of course little things like optimized movement with the bike and menuing. I could definitely see someone doing this in less than three hours, no sweat and I'd love to see one of you guys do it. If video responses still existed on YouTube, I'd ask for those, but those were sadly abandoned in 2013. Hard to believe it's been eight years. But if you do end up trying it and make a video about it, send it to me on Discord. I'd love to take a look at it. With the first Gen 2 Legendary in the bag though, it's time to move on to the box Legendary starting with Ho-Oh. And oh lord, <laughs> I don't think I'm looking forward to this one. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, tell a friend, and don't spend more than a minute doing that since if you are, you're taking too long. I want to give a huge shout out to my $10 and above patrons, Justin Dimenstein, Zachary Kiever, Aiden Brannon, Andy Garber, David Dunn, Kyle Campbell, Landon, Michael Evans, Phoenix Fire, and Zeno. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you'd like to support as well, you can head over to my Patreon page, link in the description, where you can get access to stuff like videos early, an exclusive role on my Discord server, link also in the description, challenge requests, and much more. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this, and I'll see you guys next time with another challenge. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.